Another example of the most stable chair. This one I have two substituents on the same side. This one is the cis. This one I have one substituent in the front, the other one in the back. This one is the trans. That's my limitation right there. Whenever I put these two substituents, they have to be on the same side of the molecule. This one, they have to be on the opposite side of the molecule. All right, I'm going to draw two chairs. One for the cis and one, one for the trans. And what I want to do is that I want to go straight to the most stable chair. Oh, that's not pretty, but that's what we have to work with. All right, this is one, three. This is also one, three. I'm going to mark my positions in pencil. I always start in my favorite carbon. All right. On the cis, I want the most stable conformation right away. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to check which one is the biggest group, the terbutyl group or the methyl. Obviously, the terbutyl is bigger, bulkier, and bulkier substituents do much better on equatorial position. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to actually put my bulkiest group on the equatorial position first. So the equatorial position on this one happens to be going down. I'm not thinking about axial or equatorial yet. That's, that's coming, but not yet. What I'm thinking is bulkiest equatorial. All right, now I need to put my methyl. And the methyl is slightly smaller, but right now it doesn't matter because my limitation right here is that I have to put that methyl cis to my terbutyl. Well, I put my terbutyl in an equatorial position and that one happens to be down. So when I go to carbon number three and put my methyl, I have to put it cis to my terbutyl, down, down. I have to put both of them down. So that's how you immediately can go to the most stable conformation. Pick the biggest substituent and put that one on an equatorial position. And then when you attach the second or maybe the third substituent, make sure you follow this cis uh, relationship. On the second one right here, I need to actually put the methyl trans to my terbutyl. And if my terbutyl is down, that means that trans to down, it has to be up. Well, on carbon number three, the up position happens to be axial. There's nothing I can do right there. So you go ahead and you put the, the methyl trans to your terbutyl. It's axial. It's okay. Just don't worry about it. Because this right here is the most stable conformation for the trans isomer. If you were to flip this chair, that equatorial terbutyl would go to axial, and that's really bad. The methyl would go equatorial, but that doesn't do anything because the biggest group, when you flip this chair, the biggest group goes axial, and that is bad. That is worse. So this one is your lowest energy, your most stable conformation for the trans. This one right here is your most stable conformation for the cis. Now let's compare these two. Which one is more stable? This one is more stable, isn't it? Because I was able to put two substituents on equatorial position. So in this particular example, cis is more stable than trans. That happens for this particular example. Not every example is going to have cis more stable than trans. Do the same example, but put this methyl and carbon number four and do the cis and the trans and see which one is more stable.